Welcome back guys, Israel here. I'm pretty sure the majority of you guys know about storing JSON web tokens in local storage, kind of when you receive them on the client side. But did you know that that's actually sort of not the best way of doing things? What if I told you that you wouldn't even need to worry on the client side about absolutely any of that? If you just knew how to implement this one thing on the back end. So now I'm sure that you guys are thinking, what is this one thing? Well, this one thing are HTTP only cookies. These cookies allow you from the server side to set the token so that it automatically sends every time the client makes a request. So now let's dive into the code to show you guys how to create them and insert our JWT in them using our .NET 6 API. And I will take a pause during the video to explain the differences between these cookies and storing JWTs in local storage and the security and or added benefits or downsides of using cookies. So let's go. But before we continue, if you guys end up finding this video helpful, please remember to drop a like on it so we can spread to more developers as well as subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the other wonderful content. Thank you. But with that being said, I will be continuing to use the API code from the previous video in this series where I showed how to sign in using Angular and .NET with Google. There should be a card above and all the links to GitHub repos should be below in case you guys just want to download the code. Well, now that we're at the project, I want to quickly just walk through the client side that we have, even though this is not a front end focused video or an angular video, I want to just explain what we have here. So we have this Google button. If you're curious on how this all went down, go check out the card here so you can watch the video on how we set up Google and all that. But other than that, we have this login form, very basic, just an email password. We're just logging in. So once we click this, we are going to make a login request. We're going to receive the cookie with the JWT inside of it. We're going to get sent to another page where all we can do is log out or get some information using that cookie information. Um, but that's everything that happens on the client side. But I wanna point out one very important thing that you might need to set up on your client side if you don't already do it. And it's gonna, very, it's gonna matter if you actually are able to capture the cookie and then also automatically send it with any request. So let's get in and I'm gonna show you guys what it is. So if you go to your requests, in Angular at least, and I think I saw on react as well there's something very similar that's like with credentials so what this tells the request or what this tells it tells the browser to go and grab whatever authorization headers you have or cookies and put them in the request automatically so this is what does it so there might be something different or similar i'm not sure in every single front end framework i can't tell you um but you need to make sure that so it automatically does this you include something along these lines so that your client side handles that automatically. And also when it receives that cookie initially, that it automatically sets it in your browser as well. So that's all I wanted to point out here. Uh, but with that being said, now let's talk about cookies versus storing your JWT in local storage. I'm sure a lot of you have done local storage. And I know when I was researching about all of this is where I stumbled upon HTTP only cookies. So I'm sure a lot of you might be in the same boat. So I want to explain to you guys the kind of the pros and cons of each, the benefits, which is better, which is more secure, and in what instances you would want to use it. So let's dive into that now. So here we have it, HTTP only cookies versus local storage. These are the two most common ways to store your JSON web token. I'm sure if any of you guys have investigated or looked into JSON web tokens, you've stumbled upon this topic. You've seen, I guess, how polarizing it can be on a lot of YouTube channels and blogs, how everyone's going back and forth about what's more secure, which should you use, uh, you know, at, to what point should we care? But I want to just put the facts out here and let you guys kind of process which is, would be better for you in your circumstance. Local storage is pure JavaScript and it's easy to use. You don't need an API. You just need to have to put the token in the header before making a request. It is extremely vulnerable to cross-site scripting attacks since your token can be taken straight from the JavaScript in your browser. HTTP only cookies cannot be accessed via JavaScript, so they aren't as vulnerable, but they still are. And they can be sent automatically with every HTTP request like we just talked about earlier. There is a size limit of about four kilobytes on the data that you can put in cookies. So that could hamper you if you have a lot of data and also the client can't access any of the data in there. It's only server side. So in our case here, where I am controlling the JWT, where the client doesn't need any information, it's basically only for strictly authentication. Cookies are better here. Why? Let me explain because the client cannot access them. So the client never needs to touch it. There's no issues with someone getting it, that token from their browser. It's just, there is this JWT inside of it and we're only authenticating on our endpoints in our API. We don't ever need any information from that token, but let's say our client need to access 
the username, the role needed to show information on the front end, then probably just using local storage would be better because then the client would have access to that things. And obviously if there was more security, there's a whole lot of other things around these tokens. This should never be your only way to secure your, your application. Um, but those are kind of the two scenarios. So if you needed client side information and you needed more access to the token because there's things that you need, uh, whether username or anything like that, then maybe local storage might be better. But if you're just kind of doing more strictly authenticating and you're doing a lot more processing on your back end, uh, then maybe cookies would be the way to go. Uh, but those are kind of the pros and cons. And that's what I want to leave to you. But now let me actually show you guys in the .NET 6 API that we have how to actually create these cookies and serve them up properly to the client. So now that we have a better understanding of what HTTP only cookies are, now let's actually implement them within our .NET 6 API. So let me just quickly walk you through to what we have. Um, so let me run the application. So as you guys can see, we have this items controller. That is one of our methods. This is basically the data that we've been pulling once we've been authenticated. So we have our login method, our login with Google, which we covered in the Google video. And then we have our register. Register is basically a user account. And then this is just our data that gets a color list. So we're going to be basically in this login method. This login method is where we are currently creating the JWT and just sending the JWT back. But we're going to slightly tweak that to instead of sending a just token across, we're going to send a cookie with the token inside of it. And then we're going to tweak the authentication so that when we go to that authorize tag that is right here, we can still use the JWT and we're not like trying to have a cookie you, we're not using cookie authentication here. We're still using the token. The cookie is just a ship and the token is just one passenger inside. And that's what we move around. And then once we get to the API, we pluck it out and then we authenticate with that. So now let me actually show you guys how to do that. First things first, I just changed this tag to authorize because we're just using JWT, plain and simple. We're not doing roles or claims or policies, any of that. So now if we go to our actual like authenticator, so this is where it's little tweaks are going to happen. So we have this login method and in the Google video, what I did is I basically grabbed all the thing for generating like the JWT and I pulled it out into its own method. And then I just added in once we kind of check that the user exists with their password and blah, 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 everything's good. Then we're just going to basically reply. Okay. And we're going to send back their token in this method. That's right here, which we basically just reply with the token encryptor username, blah, 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 blah. And then that token would get put into local storage on the front end or whatever you wanted to do with it. But we're going to tweak that now. How do we tweak it? So since we're not actually returning a JSON web token, we're returning a cookie. That cookie is going to go back in the request. So we don't actually have to return anything. So what I want to actually do is I want to take out this method. We don't need it here. We can just return OK. We don't need it here because the cookie is not going to be in this reply. It's going to be in the header of the reply. So what we're going to do is leave that there. Let me stop this from running. So I'm basically pulling out the method here. So I want to prove to you guys that I'm not returning anything actually like in the body of the, of the object, I guess. And then we're going to come into here where we're actually creating the JWT because I want this JWT to be inside of my cookie. And how do we do that? Well, this is the code to do exactly that. This is the code. This is the HTTP context. And we're going to go to the response. So what we're going to send back to the client and we're going to go to the cookie section and append our token. Our token is that encryptor token that is right here. It is a token that we were sending back. We're not sending it back anymore. We are just encrypting it into the cookie. We're putting it inside of this cookie and then we're setting the cookie settings. We're just setting default expires in seven days. HTTP only so that it knows that it is HTTP only that the JavaScript should not have access to it. And then everything else is just solid, no simple settings. But these are the two important ones. Obviously, when it expires, it's up to you. And then HTTP only gets or sets a value that indicates whether a cookie is accessible by the client side. And we do not want it to be accessible by the client side from everything that we've already talked about. So once we set this, it's in our cookie. Our token will be in our cookie. But how do we make sure that once we get the cookie back in the reply or the request to go retrieve something, how do we get that value out of the cookie and then actually use it to authenticate? That is the next part of this whole thing. So now let us go to our program. In our program, we're going to have to alter how we're doing this, this scheme right here. It's actually not as much as you might think that we have to do. It's actually not a lot. 
um, it's actually pretty pretty cool once you kind of see the slight tweak that we have to do. So the first thing that we do is we just add the cookie. We just have to know that cookie authentication, that we're using cookies, that cookies are involved in this whole process. Um, and I'm naming the cookie just token. This next point is the key to it all. It's so that we don't have to alter everything that we have to now be using cookies. We are now just using a cookie to transport, like I was saying earlier. So we are going to include right after what we have here, we are going to do events, our JWT bearer events. What this events basically saying that whenever we receive a request, what we want to do is we want to go to the context of the request and we want to go to the request. We want to go to the cookies and then we want to take that token, this token, the one that we named right here token, when we created it, we want to go in here and we want to grab this token and set it as the token, the token that then gets used to authenticate here because we are still using um, JWT bear for authentication. So that is how we're extracting from the cookie, the token value. And then we return task completed. And that is everything that you have to set up to be able to now with already what we're using with JWT now put it in a HTTP only cookie, send the cookie and then receive it, extract the value and then use it for authentication. And now let's see it in action. Well, now let me prove to you guys that the cookie works, that the JWT is inside of it and it's being passed along with the request retrieved when we log in and sent whenever we actually try and hit an endpoint and authenticate correctly. So let's go in and let's actually check it out. So I already have everything running. So I already have my login again. Let me just quickly register my user in this database. So we're in. So now let me actually try and sign in my super secret password. Let's log in. So we're already in. Let's step all the way through this. Again, remember that I'm not returning anything. So if I get this token, it's because it's, I'm being set correctly in the header because I'm not returning anything here like I was whenever I was returning stuff down here. So let's step through. We have our encryptor token in this very next line. We have our token here and it's going to be appended as the header. Let us just continue all the way through. Now we are in the front end. So we are in the response of the angular. I'm just going to step through here and then we can check it out. So if we go to my cookie section in my dev tools, you'll see that we have this token here. This token is the cookie value, which is the JWT that we just created. And if we go back to the network, I can show you guys in the request. So this was the request to log in and we see the set here. What does that look like? It looks like my thumbnail. This is where we are getting the cookie to set and it is the token that we created that token is this right here that token right here that we create is that and it is now set in our browser automatically and we didn't do anything and our jwt is now set so now what is the next thing well we are now logged in on the front end so what i want to do i want to go get my information now that i'm authenticated so i want to show you guys how that works so let's get this list we are here so like i told you guys earlier the cookie should be automatically put in the request and sent across with that with credentials. So we're going to see that when I click this, we're just going to go straight into the method. We are already authenticated. So let me go show you guys kind of what happened in the request. We're going to get this, this get color list. We see that in the request headers, the cookie was automatically sent through with the token, the JWT. And then what that triggers is that when it goes through here, we received it and we extracted that token and we used it for authentication. And then that's what happened there. So now let us go back to the client. We are able to get the list of information all the way through and we have it. This all executed correctly as it should and we were able to get the list here. So now, obviously, if I try and do this and I get rid of this token, we're not gonna have this cookie anymore. So if I try and make another call to this, to get this list, we get an error response at 401 that we are not authorized to go in there. So that's how you see that it was looking for that token, but there's no cookie anymore. So we can't get in. So that's how I proved to you guys that this is working. And now we just end up logging out and we're good. So that is how you use a cookie within a .NET 6 application. 
And you guys might be thinking right now, well, I know everything about cookies now. And I saw his code for using JSON web tokens. There's nothing else I need to learn. Well, you'd be wrong. There's a lot of more information on JSON web tokens and how they should be used properly and how they can secure your application. And if you want to learn a lot more further, I highly suggest you watch this video right here.